Hello, I am Mohamed Chinara. In today's video, we will be reviewing the anatomy surrounding the cerebrospinal fluid spaces. Let's start with an axial MRI scan through the level of the mid-cranial vault. Although it might be a bit too much at this stage, it's useful to know that this is a T2-weighted sequence, and that's because fluid within the ventricular system and overlying the brain surface is bright in its appearances. This here is the right lateral ventricle. And here is the left lateral ventricle. The lateral ventricles have certain defining features, namely a frontal horn that projects towards the frontal lobe. If we come down a couple of slices, you can see that here is the right frontal horn of the right lateral ventricle and the left frontal horn of the left lateral ventricle. They communicate with the third ventricle, seen as a slit-like ventricular space just here, by these two tiny foramina, one here and one here, called the foramina of Munro. The posterior aspect of the lateral ventricles include an occipital horn. Here is the right occipital horn projecting into the right occipital lobe. By a similar merit, there is the left occipital horn projecting into the left occipital lobe. CSF flows from the third ventricle down to the fourth ventricle through the cerebral aqueduct, which we'll go on to discuss in a couple of slices. This is the fourth ventricle, and you can see it has a very typical molar-shaped configuration. It lies posterior to the brainstem, indicated here, and anterior medial to the cerebellar hemisphere, which can be seen here and here. If we come down a couple of slices even still, this represents the eventual emptying of CSF into the cisterna magna, the big CSF space at the level of the foramen magnum. If we now take a sagittal T1 weighted sequence, that is to say that fluid now within the cerebrospinal fluid spaces now appears dark or lower in signal when compared to other structures such as the brainstem, we can highlight some further structures. The third ventricle is located in or around this region. Here is the fourth ventricle shown on sagittal MRI sequences. We touched on this earlier, but there is a tiny tube that connects the third ventricle to the fourth ventricle, and that is outlined by the red arrow here. We call this the aqueduct of Sylvius or the cerebral aqueduct. We'll now try and talk through some of this on a video cinematic sequence to help illustrate the anatomy in a bit more detail. Starting on the right, here are the lateral ventricles. You can see the right lateral ventricle and the left lateral ventricle. The membrane between them is a septum pellucidum. Here you have the frontal horn of both. These are the foramina of Monroe opening up into the third ventricle and there are occipital horns projecting into the occipital lobes. The ventricles head anteriorly towards the temporal lobe and there is a right temporal horn and a left temporal horn. If we find the third ventricle again, here is the cerebral aqueduct going down to open into the fourth ventricle, which you can see here. This proceeds inferiorly and opens up via two lateral foramina or apertures called the foramina of Lushka and a median aperture, shown here, called the foramen, foramen of Magendi, into the cisterna magna. Here we have a T1-weighted sequence with fluid representing low signal. You now see the right lateral ventricle and the left lateral ventricle, and in between the two, the septum pellucidum. As the images proceed in a caudal direction, you will start to see the frontal horns disappear, and we'll see the foramina of Monroe on the right and left open into the third ventricle. This is the ventricular trigone, a common union point of the three different ventricular horns. The right lateral ventricle proceeds anteriorly, and you'll see the right temporal horn there. Here's the left temporal horn. We'll now try and demonstrate the aqueduct of Sylvius. Here's the third ventricle appearing now, and you can see the tiny cerebral aqueduct here 
making its way down to open up into the classic molar tooth shaped fourth ventricle shown here by the red arrow. This eventually empties via two lateral apertures called the foramina of Lushka, one indicated here and the other here, and a central foramen of Magendi shown here to open up into the big CSF space at the level of the skull base called the cisterna magna. Thanks for watching. I trust this was useful for you. Please get in touch if you have any further or specific queries.